All right, welcome back, Pokemon fans. Um, we're in round two of the Independence Midseason Showdown. On the bottom of your screen, we've got Jacob Peterson, and on the top, we're going to have uh, Bryson, and I forget his last name already because I'm horribly irresponsible. So, in team preview, we see Jacob's using a team of Charizard, Tapu Lele, Landorus, Mimikyu, Snorlax, and Excelgore. And uh, facing off against Bryson, who's using Metagross, Volcarona, Milotic, Tyranitar, Hitmontop, and Tapu Bulu. So there's a couple Pokemon here in Team Preview that I want to talk about. First off, the Excelgore that we just saw um, being used to some great success in Madison at the Regional Championships. So Excelgore carrying the ability Unburden, usually paired with the Psychic Seed, um, going to allow it to double its speed and outspeed near everything in the format, um, thanks to its item being activated and activating the ability Unburden. Um, following off with the final Gambit, which is capable of KOing up to uh, base 80, HP Pokemon fully invested or um, up to base 115 Pokemon that are uninvested. So you do need to be careful make sure that the uh, Pokemon you're targeting down with that move will um, not have more HP than Excelgore, uh, you know, in order for a final gambit to deal the damage that it needs to take off the opposing Pokemon. But it can be very strong, uh, a very strong play to make to just trade one for one right off the bat, remove a big threat to your team. So on Bryson's side, though, I do want to talk about that Milotic as we're jumping into turn one. Uh, Milotic, with that ability competitive, can be great deterrent for both Landorus and Incineroar, which uh, often drop in, drop the Intimidates down, and so uh, Milotic can handle both of those opposing Pokemon very well. So we see Jacob leading with Charizard and Excelgore. Uh, meanwhile, Bryson leads with Volcarona and Hitmontop. So this is kind of a throwback to Gen 5 with that Top Moth uh, combination. Hitmontop being able to threaten with fake out, drop and intimidate in order to weaken the attack of the opposing Pokemon. Um, it can use wide guard to protect Volcarona from rock slides and in general can support Volcarona very well. So Volcarona is in a prime position to try and go for a quiver dance here. The problem is if that Charizard's carrying overheat and Charizard moves before Volcarona, that can often be enough to uh, one hit KO the Volcarona. Um, you know, if it moves before Volcarona gets the special defense boost. So we do see Excelgore Protect. Doesn't want to take damage from the fake out here. Wants to uh, preserve itself. And Charizard also protecting. So it looks like Jacob's just making the safe call. Doesn't want to take any damage on this fake out turn. Um, however, we instead of the Quiver Dance, we do see Tailwind. So that's going to give Volcarona a better speed advantage um, than just a single Quiver Dance would. Uh, which is going to be really important. So now that Excelgore is in trouble, you know, it's threatened to buy the Volcarona, which is going to be able to hit it for super effective damage. Um, both both of these Pokemon uh, do resist fighting, so it's not likely that Hitmontop itself can deal a whole lot of damage, but it's definitely something that, um, you know, we could be seeing a switch out for uh, something else, or we could just see it going for some support moves. It could potentially go for a helping hand or a wide guard, uh, depending on what Bryson thinks Jacob's gonna go for. So we do see Excelgore switch out here, not wanting to take any damage from the Volcarona, and Snorlax comes in. Snorlax having very high special defense is gonna take any attacks from Volcarona very well. However, it is gonna be threatened by the Hitmontop, uh, who can hit it super effectively with fighting moves. Uh, we do see Landorus come out, drop and intimidate. That's not going to affect Volcarona too much, but will slow down the Hitmontop if Hitmontop chooses to attack. So we do see the Helping Hand come out and Overheat connecting into the Landorus slot. That's a ton of damage. Gets the one hit KO thanks to that Helping Hand. And so that's going to put Bryson in a really strong position because he's still got Tailwind up for, I believe, two more turns. Um, Although he is going to be lacking on the offensive pressure at this point. Uh, his Volcarona is at minus two special attack and his Hitmontop is at minus one attack uh, due to the Intimidate and the Overheat drops specifically. So that does give Jacob a chance, you know, to kind of swing the momentum in his favor. He's got a chance he could try and set up his Snorlax right now, though he does need to be careful of the Hitmontop. Even minus one super effective fighting moves are not going to go well into that Snorlax. Um, and so if he needs to preserve his Snorlax's HP for late game, you know, he does need to be careful, but he could try and use his time to set up some uh, some curses if he's got it, or um, maybe go for a belly drum. The Hit on Top 
Yeah. So that you threatened by Charizard, um, just because Charizard deals so much damage in general. We could see a Mega Evolution most likely in the Mega uh, Charizard Y, which uh, would set Drought, allow him to deal a lot of damage with any fire type attacks off of a very high special attack. So we do see Volcarona switch out into Tyranitar. Uh, Tyranitar is going to take basically any attack from the Charizard very well. And again, it's going to be able to threaten that Snorlax, um, you know, potentially with like a low kick, which some Tyranitars have been known to carry. So we do see the Mega Evolution into Charizard Y and uh, unsetting the sun or unsetting the sand and going for the sun mode. So we do see close combat into the Snorlax dealing just about 50% HP, um, procking the Figgy Berry, going to bring Snorlax right back up to full. And we do see overheat. If this goes into the hit on top, that should be enough for the KO, and it is. Um, mostly, you know, thanks to Charizard's massive, massive special attack, and also due to the uh, <coughs> special defense drops of the using uh, close combat. So we do see Snorlax go for the belly drum. So that's going to be dangerous because now it's going to be, you know, at plus six, capable of essentially one hit KOing whatever it wants to. The problem is it's going to be slower than everything uh, Bryce had, Bryson has on his side of the field, um, and at 50% HP, it's going to be taking a lot of damage from anything. So we do see Metagross coming in to take the place of that fainted hit on top, and Metagross will have the speed advantage if it chooses to Mega Evolve. It will be faster than uh, both of Jacob's Pokemon. Even with even if Tailwind expires, and uh, again, Snorlax is not as bulky on the physical side, so definitely doesn't want to take attacks from that Metagross. And the Tyranitar very threatening into this Charizard as well. You know, it has a very high uh, defense. Charizard's already lowered special attack, so it's not going to be able to deal a whole ton of damage to the Tyranitar. Um, and will be taking you know four times super effective rock slides in return. So we do see the Charizard go for Protect, um, stalling out this last turn of Tailwind and also getting some information. By seeing that the Metagross moved first, Jacob knows that the Tyranitar is not Scarf, meaning that his Charizard will likely uh, outspeed it. However, due to Snorlax getting KO'd that turn, uh, Charizard's not going to be able to switch out to reset the, uh, the special attack drop from Overheat. So we do see Excelgore hit the field one more time. We haven't seen it do anything yet this game besides Protect. Uh, so this could be a chance for Excelgore to potentially try and turn the game around. Um, but more likely than not, it looks like Bryson's in a really strong position right now. Um, and with, you know, three Pokemon remaining uh, against two, with Charizard already lowered, and Excelgore, most of the time that is dealing damage, it is KOing itself in the process. Uh, so we do see Metagross switch out, and in comes Volcarona. As Tyranitar protects, trying to bait out, figure out what Jacob's doing, as the final gamut goes into the Tyranitar slot, um, and this Heat Wave connecting with the Volcarona, at minus two, that's going to deal not enough damage. Um, however, both Pokemon likely in range for final gamut, but it's... Uh, the problem is, if Jacob goes for that, he's going to have trouble closing out the game with his weakened Charizard. So with Volcarona on the field, there is potential for him to go ahead and set Tailwind again. Um, if he does that, then Tyranitar is in a strong position to go ahead and win the game with Rock Slide being super effective against both of its opposing Pokemon. However, uh, Volcarona may not be able to set Tailwind because it could go down to a final gambit here. Uh, so it just depends on what Jacob wants to do. He's kind of having to pick and choose where he wants to hit into. So we do see it looks like Bryson wants to preserve that Tyranitar for his in-game situation. You know, just wants to be able to click, uh, click Rock Slide to win the game. Uh, as Encore goes in, so that's a... You know, a good play on Jacob's part, you know, if he can Encore that Tyranitar into Protect, you know, prevent it from dealing damage, he's in a good position. Uh, didn't work out this turn because of the switch, 
but definitely a threat from Excelvor in order to lock your opponent into suboptimal moves. So we do see the Tailwind go up though, uh, meaning both the Metagross and the Volcarona will be uh, faster than this Excelvor, so it can only encore them into moves they use this turn. As we do see the Iron Head into the Charizard slot, um, not very effective, but for a not very effective move, it did about 40%, which is a ton, as this Overheat connects with the Excelgore and takes it out in one hit. Um, overheat, you know, strong base power, boosted by the sun, and super effective. Excelgore, not particularly bulky, so it's not going to take that very well. And we do see the Overheat come out into the Metagross, even after the minus two drop from the earlier Overheat, it is enough to pick up the KO. Uh, however, we are going to be seeing Tyranitar come in here, uh, Charizard being at minus four now, and not going to be able to fire off a Solar Beam into that Tyranitar. Anyways, um, it's looking like Bryson's got this game locked up. And so both players are going to be going back to the drawing board saying, hey, what worked and what do I need to fix for this next round or for this next game? Um, I do think. Uh, I do think Bryson did a good job this game mitigating the threat of the Excelgore, you know, knowing that uh, it can pick and choose to nuke something, and he did a very good job of preserving his uh, win condition, which is this Tyranitar getting out and rock sliding the Daylights out of the Charizard. So we do see the Z move coming out of Tyranitar, giving away that it's Darkinian Z as it's going for uh, the Black Hole Eclipse. Going to hit into the Protect, not deal a whole lot of damage. Uh, personally, if I'm in this situation, I'm not trying to reveal that I have the Dark EMZ or that I have Rage Powder on his Volcarona. I I feel like that's giving away information for no reason when you're already in a commanding position. Um, but it could be that he wants his opponent to know he's carrying those things, you know, so potentially uh, Bryson wants Jacob to try and play around them, and he's just not even going to use that next game. Um, so we could have a little bit of mind games there. Uh, but at least to me, it does kind of look like giving away information that you don't need to. As we do see the Rage Powder, Charizard failed to protect. So as long as this Rock Slide connects, um, it look, oh, and he goes for a Dragon Dance instead, just adding insult to injury here. Um, so that Dragon Dance, all he needs to do is connect with a single Rock Slide at this point, or even a Crunch. Um, Charizard is on very low HP, so it's not going to take any hits from the Tyranitar in the first place. Uh, so that Rock Slide just really, like I said, adding insult to injury there. Um, not necessary, but why not stunt when you can, you know? So And Jacob Ch choosing not to protect on this turn, uh, as Bryson goes for another Dragon Dance. <laughs> He may be looking to get the KO just with sand residual damage, but he is opening himself up to potential for like crits and burns um, that could like, you know, swing the game out of his favor. Uh, a little risky for no reason when he could just go for the win. And it looks like Jacob's like, you know what? I've had enough of this. This game is over. Let's move into game two. And he does go ahead and forfeit. So we're going to jump into game two. Um, Looking at Jacob's team, he's definitely really threatened by that Tyranitar, and uh, if Tyranitar gets the proper support, either via Hit on Top or Volcarona, both which can do so, uh, then it can be a really, really strong monster in this team. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see Tapu Lele make an appearance here, although it is threatened by the Metagross. It's one of uh, Jacob's best answers to Tyranitar. Uh, between that, uh, potentially setting the trick room mode um, could be very strong, or um, hoping to fire off Intimidates. I do think in game one, Jacob was worried about the Milotic really throwing things, uh, you know, throwing damage back if he used the Landorus too much. Um, however, since Bryson didn't bring Milotic, he may be safe to do so. 
uh, in game two. This is really interesting. Exilver definitely showed some, you know, potential as it went for some final gamuts and some encores, and it just wasn't successful in game one. I wouldn't be surprised to see him using it again, especially if you can lock uh, Hip on Top into Fake Out or into, you know, a non-damaging move against you, you know, and try and create a dead slot, essentially, that can be a really strong option. Also, being able to encore the Dragon Dance, you know, force force the Tyrant Star to just keep boosting uh, and not dealing damage, although you do need to be careful because even if you are locked into a move via Encore, you can still use the Z-move, so that could actually backfire as well. Definitely something Jacob needs to watch out for. Something bright. Nope, I said it right. Disregard with that. Alright, so both players have selected their Pokemon for Game 2, and we're going to go ahead and jump into Turn 1 as we see in the field for Jacob is going to be his Mimikyu and Landorus. Uh, on the opposing side of the field, Bryson sends out his uh, Volcarona and hit my top. So top mom out again. Why fix it if it ain't broken? Um, so we do know that Volcarona has the ability to really threaten this Landorus uh, with a Helping hand boosted overheat. It's going to deal a ton of damage. You know, we saw last game it hit that one hit KO. Uh, Mimikyu in a good position because it can't be faked out and it's going to tank at least one hit from the opposing Volcarona um, thanks to its ability disguise. So it could kind of force this Volcarona if Volcarona wants to try and target the Mimikyu uh, into getting a special attack drop without dealing any damage. Uh, so both players. Uh, choose to lead with Intimidate. So um, the Intimidate really going in Bryson's favor a little bit. Uh, since we do know that Volcarona is a special, special attacker, its uh, attack being lowered isn't going to be a huge deal. However, Landorus and Mimikyu both are normally physical attackers. We have seen some special Landorus um, popping up here and there, um, but for the most part, we're seeing special attackers, uh, or physical attackers rather. So Landorus not wanting to be there for the fake out and potentially overheat, swaps out for Snorlax as we do see a Shadow Claw connect into him on top, dealing only about 30%, and the eject button is activated, um, giving Bryson a free switch. Volcarona still has to move. Um, it could set a tailwind here for free, although it, uh, that is a bit of a risky move, um, simply due to the fact that on the next turn, Mimikyu can go ahead and set tailwind, and now Snorlax is in a really strong position. Um, you know, in Trick Room, facing your opponent in Tailwind, Starlax will be the slowest, therefore the fastest Pokemon uh, on the field. Could be very damaging, but we'll also have to see what this Volcarona does. If it's going for an attack, um, obviously that's not as big of a deal. However, Starlax is still slower than everything on Bryson's side of the field. And we see Whirlwind going up, so trying to prevent the Trick Room, uh, which Jacob didn't go for, but it does kind of throw off his footing a little bit. He doesn't get to set up what he wants to. Um, so we do see Tapu Lele hit the field, taking sand damage before Volcarona, so we do know that it is faster than the Volcarona, um, which is definitely good information to have. And Tyranitar on the field, obviously not taking damage due to its rock typing, um, with Snorlax being the slowest. So giving away those tiers, you know, can be important for confirming things if you weren't 100% sure. So Tapu Lele does threaten this Tyranitar. Tyranitar special defense boost thanks to the sand. Um, however, Wing Blast is still gonna hurt a lot. We know it's not carrying the weakest policy, which some Tyranitars have been known to carry, so it's not as huge of a threat. However, if uh, Tapu Lele is trying to go for a Moon Blast, it can just be redirected by Rage Powder from that Volcarona. Um, so this does kind of put Jacob in a tough spot. He wants to attack that Tyranitar, but it's not necessarily going to be out um, the entire time. However, we do see Tyranitar switching out as Metagross comes in. Psychic connecting with the Volcarona under, under Psychic Terrain deals about 70%. Decent damage as this overheat does connect with Snorlax and it doesn't even get it down to the berry range as the return goes into Volcarona as well, going to be able to pick up the KO. Um, however, a little bit of bad luck going on here as Flame Body activates and burns Snorlax, which is that big physical attacker. 
Uh, so that's really unfortunate on Jacob's part. Uh, getting that burn because it's going to really limit Snorlax's damage output, especially since it hasn't gone for a belly drum yet. And this Metagross out on the field, it's going to be faster than the Tapu Lele, unless the Tapu Lele is Scarfed, which we have seen use with um, Excelgore as a partner. Uh, however, if it is Scarfed, it's not going to be able to deal a ton of damage with Psychic into Metagross, who four times resist it. Or if Tyranitar hits the field, Tyranitar is completely immune. Um, so even if Tapu Lele has a speed advantage right now, it may not want to go for it. It may not get anything out of it. Uh, so this is... While um, Jacob currently has the Pokemon advantage, uh, Bryson definitely has field advantage, at least for this turn, with a Burn Snorlax and a Tapu Lele that is either slower than uh, slower than Metagross or locked into Psychic, which um, are both bad places for Tapu Lele to be. So I wouldn't be super surprised to see potentially a Landris switch in, because Landris, you know, being able to threaten both of these opposing Pokemon with a super effective Earthquake, um, and laying down an Intimidate. It wouldn't go into Metagross thanks to the ability Clear Body, um, but it would at least go into that Tyranitar, um, slowing down its damage a little bit. However, instead of seeing Landorus, we do see Mimikyu coming in, uh, wanting to preserve Landorus for after Metagross has Mega Evolved in order to be able to use Intimidate, you know, so that way it no longer has the ability Clear Body. So we do see the Iron Head connecting into what was the Tapu Lele slot and is now the Mimikyu slot. So no damage to Mimikyu right now, but it does break its disguise. And we see a Dragon Dance. So this is going to be a really strong position for the Tyranitar. It's now going to be faster than um, everything except potentially a Choice Scarf Pokemon on um, Jacob's side of the field. So with Sand... Going into Mimikyu, it breaks, um, it could potentially have been carrying a Focus Sash. Um, not the most common item on Mimikyu, but it's something that we have seen before. So the Sand is in uh, in Bryson's advantage, just making sure that that Mimikyu will not be able to survive an attack from Metagross this turn. Um, and also the Tyranitar being a plus one is going to be very damaging. Uh, Snorlax having gone for the Recycle, good for Snorlax's lung longevity uh however Snorlax needs a belly drum up and i'm just not sure where it's going to get the chance to do so so we do see the uh darkinium z activating for the snorlax probably or, excuse me for the tyranitar probably going into the snorlax at plus one attack it's going to deal a lot of damage oh but it is going into the mimikyu slot um should, you know, at plus one and as, as a Z move, you know, base 150 power should be enough to pick up the KO, and it is. And the Iron Head goes into the Snorlax, uh, dealing over 50% damage, forcing Snorlax to eat the berry. Um, however, due to this residual damage, if Snorlax goes for the Belly Drum, it's going to be a very low HP on this next turn. Um, so if we do see the Belly Drum, which Snorlax definitely needs in order to be able to... Uh, deal some damage, especially considering that it's burned. However, due to the sand and the burn, you know, Snorlax is just dangerously low uh, on HP at this point. So we do see the Landorus coming out here, dropping an Intimidate on both the on both physical attackers on Bryson's field. Um, don't know the item for this Landers yet. If it's Choice Scarf, it does have the opportunity to, you know, either Earthquake or um, go for Tarantar with just a superpower for the KO. Uh, however, if it's not, it's going to be at the mercy of the Tyranitar, who's, while is at neutral attack uh, due to the Intimidate, after Dragon Dance, it's still going to be faster, you know, and could honestly just go for Rock Slide flinches. So we do see Metagross switching out for Hitmontop. Uh, Hitmontop dropping an important Intimidate on both of these opposing Pokemon as U-Turn goes into the Hitmontop, so that does confirm that we're looking at a Scarf Tyranitar. Excuse me, a Scarf Landorus. Um, so Landorus could be potentially using this turn uh, to like try and cycle Intimidates, and uh, Hitmontop coming out, getting that Intimidate onto the 
Snorlax, you know, even after the belly drum, but being a plus five versus plus six, maybe not a huge deal, uh, winds up not mattering as Rock Slide does connect and goes ahead to uh, finish off the Snorlax. So it's, you know, Bryson at no risk of taking damage from the Snorlax that turn. So we do see Landers hit the field again. It will be faster than both Pokemon that uh, Bryson has, at least for the moment. Um, we can see him on top go for a fake out into either of these two Pokemon uh, since Psychic Surge is no, or since Psychic Terrain is no longer active. Uh, priority moves are not blocked. Uh, Bryson could potentially be trying to choose a fake out target to go for another Dragon Dance. That way his Tyranitar is faster than the opposing Landorus. Um, but he could just want to protect his Tyranitar, figure out what the Landorus is going to go for, and uh, you know, then use Hit on Top appropriately because Hit on Top can do a lot of things to help protect that uh, Tyranitar. So we do see the fake out go it into the Landorus. No protects on the uh, Tapu Lele as Crunch also goes into the Tapu Lele. Not enough to pick up a KO, and we do see Psychic coming into the. Uh, hit on top, uh, dealing a decent amount of damage there and getting rid of it. So now there's no fear of wide guard uh, being an issue. So we do see Metagross hitting the field again. Um, going to take a lot of damage from a Landorus Earthquake and at this point Landorus can just lock into Earthquake. Um, yes, you're going to be KOing your own Tapu Lele, but you're going to be dealing super effective damage to both of your opponent's Pokemon, uh, which is going to be important here if uh, you know, Jacob's trying to force a game three. Another important thing is that Tyranitar is currently at minus one attack. It's been intimidated twice. So its damage output has been limited, which we did see when that crunch did, you know, kind of middling damage to the Tapu Lele. You know, normally we expect to see a bit more damage coming out of Tyranitar. So we do see Tapu Lele go for the Protect, not wanting to take any damage, you know, stick around for the next turn as Earth Power comes out, not Earthquake. Um, so that's a really big difference. However, it's not enough to pick up the KO on the Metagross. Uh, crunch into Tapu Lele and Ice Punch from the Metagross into the Landorus. That's going to pick up the KO. And so now Tapu Lele is going to be very threatened by the Metagross who outspeeds it and can just go for an Iron Head for game. So definitely, you know, Jacob played to his outs there. Um, the Earth Power just unfortunately wasn't enough damage to pick up the KO that he needed to get. Uh, but, you know, playing the best play he could, you know, maybe that's a damage roll and it could have gone the other way. Um, you know, maybe the Metagross is just particularly bulky for that breed of Pokemon, you know. Either way, uh, very well played by Bryson, you know, preserving everything he needed for each game and, uh, you know, getting the job done, taking a nice 2-0 victory. Uh, 